Hey everyone, this is James from mcaudio.tk and today I have a short video for you to explain setting up a session template in PreSonus Studio One. At the minute I have a blank uh, session opened here, there's nothing in it, no tracks loaded in so far. Uh, but what I'm going to do is go ahead and add a few things to this blank session and then we're going to see if that is a session template. So the first thing I would usually do is uh, think about what tracks I'm going to have in it. Now I don't usually add individual tracks um, such as drums, uh, guitars, keys, vocals etc. Um, but one thing I do generally use in a mixing session would be a reference track. So I go and add a new track on reference mix and click OK and that brings up this reference mix track. So that would be really be the only one I would set as a template. Um, the next thing I like to do is to add a few markers to the session template. Now these markers won't apply uh, to anything at the minute, but whenever you load your tracks into PreSona Studio One, you can then drag these markers to the appropriate points on the music. So uh, the way we add a marker, you open up the marker track, uh, click along the timeline at the top, and then simply press insert. Or you can go over to the left hand side here and press the little plus button and that will add a marker wherever you have your time indicator set. So we can go along and add a few in. And then all we have to do is name those. So these markers are going to be used to um, specify certain points in the track so you can jump quickly between them. So the first one here we would maybe name intro. Next one would be verse, and maybe a chorus, and possibly a bridge. Now, you can add more as you please, or uh, you maybe have a few verse um, markers and a few chorus markers, but these are the basic ones anyway. So now, once you have your tracks loaded in, you can move them to the specific points in your uh, within your track and you can jump quickly between them. Uh, it just makes navigating through the session a little bit easier. So once I have them set up, I generally would switch over to the mix window. I'll just bring this up full size. So you can see this is a reference mix track. Uh, we don't need to do anything with that at the minute, uh, but what we are going to do is create our buses and our uh, routing. Really this is what all our audio tracks are going to run through to get to our master bus. So it's just to make uh, the setting up of the session a little easier and it saves a little time at the start of every single mix if you already have these done. So you right click and go to add bus. And you have to think now what kind of buses you're going to need. Um, usually, well for the purpose of this, we're going to have a drum bus, a guitar bus, a keys bus, and a vocal bus, and they would be the, the the sort of four main ones. So we go ahead here and add four um four bus channels, and then we can go through double click down the bottom to name them. So this one would be drums, bus, and guitars, keys, and vocals. So that's them all named. Uh, what I like to do is color code my buses. So this first layer of bussing, I will generally color code them. And if you click on the, the name at the bottom of the, the track, you will notice a window appears. And I generally, this first layer of bussing, I would keep them green. Now you can choose any color you want. There's no reasoning behind this. It's just what I'm used to working with. So there's a couple of other buses I like to add into my templates and then I'll explain a little bit about the routing of them. So the first one, let's add another bus here. And this is going to be a music bus. So uh, I'll name it Music Bus. And I will color the music bus usually blue. Uh, the next one is uh, a submix. And I'll explain what these do in just one second once we get them all named and I keep my submix bus red. Uh, the reason for these are mainly for writing purposes. 
So for this music bus, this is going to, uh, everything that comes into this bus is going to be all the music tracks. So everything that's coming from the drum bus, the guitar bus, and the keys bus. And I would write them all to the music bus. So everything that's coming out of these comes, now this isn't a send, this is actually coming out of the bus and these dump into the music bus. So now if I want, I have my vocals all in one bus here, I can control the volume and I have all the music tracks on one bus. So the next thing then, this submix. Uh, the submix acts, it's more to do with the reference track if I bring it back in. If you have a reference track in here and you apply effects to your master bus over here, you will end up with um, the reference track playing through. It's coming through the main uh, mix bus, plus all your tracks are coming through the main mix bus. And whilst you want the effects to appear on your tracks, you don't want them to appear on the reference mix because they will already have been... Uh, compressed or limited and had those effects applied to them so it's not a, an A to B comparison. So what you do is you would set your reference mix to output through the main mix bus and then set all your other um, tracks to come through the sub mix and then the sub mix comes out through the mix bus. So now you can apply any tracks you want to this sub mix but whenever you solo you, your reference mix it's going straight to the main uh, bus and it's not running through that submix bus. So you don't have the problem of the effects being applied to it. So since we have all our music uh, tracks coming into the music bus, um, it's simply a matter of sending that to the submix and then also the vocals, they can go to the submix as well. So now everything in our session is coming into this submix track and then it's outputting to the main. Now, at the end of the mix, once you're getting rid of the reference mix, you can simply move any effects you have from the sub mix over onto the main mix bus and delete this sub mix. And uh, let's say it, it, it doesn't matter what's in it at the minute because it will be deleted at the end. Now, there are two other things I like to set up in a session template, and those are global effects. So if we go here, and we'll add two effects channels. And the first one I would usually use is reverb and then a delay. Now the reason you can set these up now is because if you play around and you find a nice global reverb or a nice global delay that you like, you might as well have it there if you're going to add it into every session anyway. And it saves you time setting up those uh, delay settings and reverb settings again. So I will take these and again color code them usually the darker blue and then it's time to go and add the inserts into them. So in our reverb one let me see we'll just keep it as the default reverb for now and the analog delay again. So now any tracks you want reverb on can be sent to the reverb track and the delay track. Now again, make sure you change the routing of these to go through the submix. So this here is basically as acting as your uh, main mix bus. Uh, although it's outputting through this here, you're not really paying attention to it because this here is the one you're going to add all your effects to. Now if you have um, an effects chain you usually use on your mix bus, you can add it to this here. So if you have a preset, um, this is the save mix bus I have, or if you have uh, anything else, you can add it onto this track, and that will um, that will act as your mix bus fader. So that's all the writing taken care of. Um, let's say you can go through and double check it all again. Uh, you have your markers set up, you have your reference track set up. Um, the only thing now you have to do is save that as a template. So to do that, you go up. I go file, save as template, and we'll save it as mix template, and simply hit enter. So now that's saved as a template. So if we go to file, new song, we see here it's appeared in the template. We click on the template, 
call it sample song. Okay. And now you can see up in the corner here, it's opened up sample song, but all our tracks and um, our buses, our effects are all still here and available. So now that means we can just import our tracks, go up to song, import file and import all our audio tracks and then send them out to these individual buses as we wish. And it means the routing is set up within you know, five or ten minutes, we'll get it set up quickly. Um, your templates can be as complex as you want them to be, they don't have to be simple. This is quite a simple example, but if you have a lot more writing issues, get them all set up now so you don't have to do it at the start of every session. And uh, you can have a few different templates for different styles of songs or different projects you're working on. So it just gives you um, that little bit of a head start into a mix. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions about it, you can head over to the blog at mkiaudio.tk and leave me a message or send me an email. Uh, there's a little voicemail feature on there now, so you can send in a voicemail and I'll happily answer it onto the podcast or I can answer it via email. But uh, thanks for watching again. I hope you uh, got something from this. Definitely try and use session templates. They do save you a lot of time. Um, but until the next video, thanks for watching.